Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the Week Ahead Outlook. Sorry for the echo. Uh, wow, what a week. Risk off. Coronavirus. Best performing currencies on Friday were the Swiss franc, obviously, and the yen. Um, you know, the safe havens. Um, there was also um, a lot of dollar selling into month end for the... Uh, month end portfolio rebalancing. So that uh, that led to some dollar weakness, you know, pretty much across the board. You get sterling and euro as well. Um, you can see here we've got a the 10 year uh, <coughs> excuse me, 10 year yield chart up. And we just posted the lowest weekly close since way back in August. The lows in and uh, September were about 143, and we're trading just about 150. Um, so that uh, you know, this is this is basically that the bonds have kind of led this risk off. They were bond yields were very heavy the past couple of weeks, really before um, you know before equities turned. Well before equities turn, so we like to pay close attention to the bonds, see what they're doing. They generally tell the truth. <clears throat> um, what else? Aussie dollar just got completely destroyed again. You know, this is again all all of this is just on the back of the coronavirus, and um, you can see here. You know, this is the lowest weekly close. You know, we can go all the way back. We can go back years. And you can see we haven't been down here. So we're, we're, we're now approaching this 66, 70 area, which was kind of a double bottom. Um, you know, so that seems to be taking the, the, the biggest brunt of the, the China virus. Some of the news flow over the weekend, and then we'll get to some more charts. The U.S. is going to quarantine Americans returning from China, from the Hubei district. Um, what else? Oh, I think the big the big news it'll be the open uh, is still about two hours away. I'm recording this um, two hours before the. The CME opens, uh, the futures open, but China has vowed to inject $22 billion um, dollar equivalent uh, to help ease this market route. So I believe that China futures are pricing in about an 8 to 10% drop on the open. Now they open a couple hours after the CME, so I'm not really expecting like a huge sell-off right on the open in the um, in the S&Ps and NASDAQ. Um, you know, they got, they're off, they, they closed off their lows. Let's take a look at the S&P chart here. Here's the weekly. Um, here's the daily. So we got down to a low of about 32.12, which I believe is a 50 day. I don't have the moving average up here. I try to keep this chart really clean. Um, but you can see we, we did have a, a bearish engulfing day, took out the whole week's worth of, uh, of trade on Friday. And, you know, targets for this, we have some targets are coming around 3160 and then, um, 3130, 3100. And then this whole low here was 3070. So, um, if this sell off continues, over the next few days, and let's not forget we've got the Iowa coming up on uh, Tuesday. We've got some economic data this week. We've got, you know, the end of the week is the U.S. jobs data. So, anyhow, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see some sort of bounce just on this big injection out of China. Um, Let's see what else we have economic data-wise. Um, 
not much coming out in Asia. Uh, let's see here. We do have some market data coming out of uh, South Korea, Thailand, Taiwan, Japan, uh, the market PMIs. And then we have China's PMI manufacturing, the Caxon number is coming out uh, as well. Um, so that that's pretty much wraps up the economic data for the you know the for the first trading day of the week. Um, let's go back to the charts here. So that there's your bearish engulfing in bearish engulfing day in S P, and here is in Nasdaq. We pretty much close. You can see this these little green lines here. This is just parabolic. Um, we need to watch that level right there. It's comes in, we, we traded under it, but we closed above it. So it's 89.95. Um, you know, that, that looks like a big level. And then right down here, this 89.20, where I had that alert set. Um, so again, expecting a bounce, bit of a bounce in risk. Uh, the Euro had a big day. I think a lot of this was, uh, was month end. You can see Friday's bar. And it went right up to this area here where anyone that's short is going to start stopping out on daily closes over call 111, the figure. Aussie dollar still looks weak. Uh, I believe it went down a little bit in the twilight zone. And now we're back. These charts are not updating, but we're back above 67. Uh, so that is... Um, that still looks that still looks horrible. You know, Kiwi not looking much better. Oil got perilously close to. Let me pull up the weekly. You remember we've just been in this kind of 50, 50, 50 We'll call it on the downside, and then you know we got these highs up here around sixty six. So we've just been in this big, big, big range for you know, since really April of last year. And there there was a ton of selling this week. So I think the speculators that were max long are now, you know, selling out some of these longs. And there was a big, big, uh, the CFTC position was, has shifted quite dramatically. I don't, I don't have the data in front of me, but bottom line is if 50-50 goes in oil, clearly it'll be a combination of, this virus spreading more rapidly, not able to contain it. And, uh, you know, oil has been one of the better trades from since the, since the, the, the first virus headlines. And this is just the global growth. I mean, there, some of the numbers are talking about for China GDP, you know, it's going to be heavily affected. Apple has closed, I believe, all 42 of their stores in China until further notice, I think for about a week. Um, there was also some, we had tweeted out earlier today, the, um, <laughs> their Chinese authorities, the financial market authorities are going to not allow any selling, any shorting of Chinese equities. So, I mean, they're, they're, go, they're going all in to try to stop the rot. And let's see if they succeed. I think they will initially, but if this news flow continues to get worse, uh, you know, I'm hopping on a flight tomorrow to um, the UK for 10 days and you know, people keep telling me I should buy a mask before I get on the flight. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not a bad idea. Um, let's take a look at, there's a really interesting chart speaking of Apple. Spell the ticker right. Help a pardon me. Look at this weekly. This is a crazy chart. So we had good earnings, spiked, got up to 328 new all time highs, massively reversed, took out two weeks of lows, closed below two weeks of lows. You know, this is a bearish engulfing and inverted hammer. Um, we also had some DeMarc, DeMarc 13s, 
you know, so my guess is that this is going to stay under pressure. Keep an eye on this area in here, right around just under 300. If we break there, I think there's no reason why we can't get down to, you know, some of these Fibonacci support levels. And those are from the lows of May and September um, or May and August of last year. You know, I think we could retrace some of this. So it's just a really ugly looking weekly chart. Um, so I want to get, make sure you were paying attention because obviously Apple is one of the leaders. Tesla just keeps going up. Tesla finished the day positive on Friday, even with a broad market sell-off. You know, Nasdaq and S&P down, down 2%. Um, we do have a bunch of central bank meetings coming up um, in the next two weeks. The RBA, the RBNZ, and the RICS Bank. Um, so, you know, there could be a little bit of action there. Let's not forget about the... Uh, the Uh, Bernie Sanders, I believe Bernie Sanders is still in the lead for Iowa and New Hampshire. So we have those coming up. You know, Bernie Sanders starts to pull well, the dollar is going to get hammered and the equity market is going to get hammered. So that, that's a risk. I mean, 2020 is all about the political risk. That's what we talked about as, you know, the most important risks in the market um, are is the elections the U.S. presidential election. So, you know, meanwhile, we weren't really expecting a coronavirus outbreak, which is, you know, the more immediate concern. But, uh, you know, for us, the elections are a big deal this year. Uh, let's take a look at gold real quick. We had the high weekly close. Uh, highest weekly close of this whole move. We're still below that um, Iranian missile evening where we jumped up to 16 11, 11 but it held in pretty well and you know we've had the previous two weeks it's it's uh it's gotten right back up so you know it's a high weekly close it's a high also friday was the highest daily close this chart's mislabeled because it's off i put that text in there for the daily but it's also the highest daily close at 1590 so the, the open's gonna be interesting it's two hours away i'm gonna let everyone kind of rest up and get ready for it and um you'll hear from us on the european open good luck trading this week i'll be traveling tomorrow and i will be updating from london uh you know throughout the week you know, so keep an eye on twitter and uh and you know keep an eye on if there's any big developments and big moves we'll we'll do a i'll do a, a, a midweek update as well right good luck and uh all right super bowl sunday go uh yeah, I guess I go for the Chiefs. All the best. Cheers.